Hi there and welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. Today is day 13 woo, of 30 days of 30 minute workouts. And we're gonna do this one with a little bit of a mid intensity. Okay, now by mid intensity, what I mean is that you're gonna be pushing it that little bit. So you're gonna feel as though you're working harder, certainly harder than a bottom tier, but you're not gonna be working as tough as a top max intensity workout, okay? So you're gonna go up there with the intensity and then we're gonna back down and then we're gonna go back up with the intensity again. How are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna split this 30 minutes up into six five minute intervals. We're gonna start off at 20 strokes a minute, then we're gonna go up to 22, then 24. Then we're gonna do that all over again, okay? Now you're gonna start your 20 strokes a minute at 2K plus 18 pace, the old familiar. Then 22, you're gonna increase by two or three seconds, and 24, you're gonna increase by two or three seconds again. And then when you go back down to the 20s, you go back down to 2K plus 18, and then you increase and you increase and then we're done okay simple workout today it's just about increasing intensity twice hey <laughs> so let's get into our four minute warm-up and as always we go to the front of the machine then set up our drag factor on the concept two which you use this little lever for now remember the lever is just how you adjust it it's not actually the numbers on the side could just be letters could be nonsense okay because it's about drag factor if you don't know what drag factor is please do check out the video i have on this channel and remember anytime you sit down on the machine you go to menu more options display drag factor row a couple of strokes and set it to what you want it to be i row run about 120 125 right now in case you care <laughs> if you're on a different kind of machine just set the resistance or whatever you have so that you feel like you've got a good weight from the stroke but you don't feel you have to heave against it you want to make sure that you can drive with your legs in that forward lean and arms straight position more about that later next up go to your monitor and set it to eye heights so you're not having to look up you don't have to look down both of which will destroy your posture and finally your foot straps or foot stretcher height you want to set to a point that you can get to the front of the machine with your shins in a vertical position okay so you want them to point straight up if you're set too high you might not quite get there if you're set too low you might go flying straight past that vertical position but there's lots of different factors that come into play for this your shin length your flexibility and stuff so a good average kind of ballpark is to set the straps to go across the balls of your feet or the bottom horizontal lace on your shoes and then adjust from there okay like i say everybody's different everyone needs to kind of adjust a little bit there is no this is how to set it all right Whoa, crikey i really milked the the intro to the warm-up today didn't i so four minute warm-up we're going to do this at 18 strokes a minute and the amount of power you're going to put into it for the time being to start is enough of a push from your feet that you can just think about the connection of your feet and the hands i will explain as we start okay and we're going to start in three two one let's go so you're not pushing too hard you just want to think that you're connecting your feet to the machine at the same time that your hands make the handle connect to however your machine works be it a water wheel or a flywheel like the concept 2 or a magnet who knows what you've got pistons who knows rubber bands but the point is that you put power by pushing with your feet into the machine and then that power gets into the machine because your hands connect the handle to the whatever the thing is at the same time that your feet push sounds confusing i'm hoping it's not <laughs> if you push too soon with your feet your backside scoots away from you and you'd miss putting in the power from your legs if you pull too soon with your hands, you just can't snap in that leg drive. It's like you're fighting against it and you're all shriveled up. If you can push with your feet, connect with your hands at the same time, that power should flood up through your body into the machine. And you can start to increase your pace now closer to 2k plus 20 pace now 2k is the average 500 meter time in a 2k time trial so row a 2k time trial and divide the result by four and that is your average 500 meter time and your 2k training pace so 2k plus 20 is that average plus 20 seconds righty one stroke 
and let's put one foot on the ground, continue rowing, try to keep the same motion, the same fluid in and out, where you push out from the front with your legs first, and you only pull in at the back, and then handle away, lean forwards, roll to the front. Just because you've got one leg in, doesn't mean you have to fall apart. Last stroke on this leg, and let's change legs. Continue. Same thing, other leg. This helps just ease off your flexibility. Because you've only got one leg strapped in, you're not quite as bound up by two hip flexors fighting against you. One more here. And then both legs in, straight, and then just roll with your back and arms. So you swing over your back, pull in your arms. Swing, and then you push out your arms and swing back over your back. So your back is just hinging from a one o'clock lean forwards to an 11 o'clock lean at the back. And then your arms are just pulling in and sending straight back out again. Okay, right, arm straight, forward lean, roll to the front of the machine, and just press out with your legs, not too hard. We need to have a good posture here. Don't slump down, but hold that forward lean, arm straight, and push out with your legs. Like I say, not too hard, because I want you to think about holding this position and not swinging your back too soon. One more here. Oh. Now as being, that's a warm-up done, as being today's main session starts at 20 strokes a minute and 18, uh, so in 2K plus 18, that's going to continue, almost continue that warm-up for five minutes before we start to increase. So we don't need to be excessively warm to start today's session, but if you want to continue some light rowing for the time being after you've had a little drink to prepare for today's row, then by all means do. I'll quickly explain one more time while I load it up in erg zone what we're doing today so remember we are splitting up today's half hour row into five minute intervals six of them and we're going to start off at 20 strokes a minute and 2k plus 18 pace and then we're going to go up to 22 strokes a minute and two or three seconds faster and then we're going to go up to 24 strokes a minute and two or three seconds faster again then we're going to go back to 20 strokes a minute again back to 2k plus 18 and then 22 two three seconds faster 24 two three seconds faster and we're done. Okay, so slightly, I mean, in the terms of uh, how I've been doing these workouts, five minute intervals, so slightly, maybe slightly longer. I tended to do two or three, maybe four or whatever. So you might kind of go, oh, a whole five minutes, but come on, seriously, it should be fine. So I'm going to have one last drink. I have a little wiggle on my backside, make sure it doesn't go numb. Uh, make sure that those sit bones are pressing on a different part of my glutes. Uh, and just... Quick sit check, sit rep, make sure my feet are strapped in nicely. Start up in a nice posture, make sure that I'm not slumped as I start. So kind of address the machine nicely and powerfully. And then say, right, I'm good to go. So I hope you are too. Are you ready then? So 20 strokes a minute, 2K plus 18 is our starting pace. In three, two, one, let's go. Now 20 strokes a minute is a super one to get into the rhythm for because you can just count down in three second chunks. So if you're struggling, you can of course follow me on the video, or if you're listening to this in the podcast, you can just follow along with the whoosh of my flywheel. Or like I say, you just count down in threes. Every three seconds, take a stroke. Then as to the stroke itself, for 2K plus 18, it should be a nice, you still gotta give a good push from your legs, but it should only really feel about five or six out of 10 on the effort scale. You'll maybe rise up to seven, seven and a half as you go through 
the 22 and 24 intervals but it's not this shouldn't feel like it's a colossal effort to row at 2k plus 18 pace and in fact if you just think about your drive speed and recover or recovery it should take care of itself so if you make your drive speed last one second so you every time if you're looking at your clock you make sure that it's one second and then you recover for two seconds if you have a leg drive of one second at this stroke rate with any luck you should be really close to your 2k plus 18 pace I mean it's a colossal generalization <laughs> to just assume that everybody in the world rows like me and therefore a one second drive phase should bring you to the right pace but hopefully if you have a good <laughs> sequenced technique which is all about the power generation from the legs then you're not going to be too far off I've said in a couple of other videos about how when I made the stroke rate videos I've got a few up here that are just me rowing at various stroke rates and not talking to you I know I managed to shut up um, but as I was making them all I did was load up the metronome and row at a 2 to 1 ratio so my drive speed was twice as fast as my recovery and naturally I would hit all of the training paces that I do in these sessions so at 20 strokes a minute I just naturally hit 2k plus 18 because I was rowing at a 2 to 1 ratio making sure the power is coming from my legs and not yanking on the chain with my arms I'll talk actual technique in the next interval and let's face it probably for a few more <laughs> after that too but let's get ready in seven strokes time we're going to increase stroke rate by two and pace by two or three seconds okay two more strokes one more here we go then 22 strokes a minute now the increase here should be happening by virtue of a slightly more powerful leg drive that increase in your leg drive power then makes your drive speed faster because you're putting more power into it and then if you're thinking about a nice smooth fluid rhythm to your stroke then your recovery will also be slightly faster and therefore a slightly faster drive speed and a slightly faster recovery should be enough 
to have just taken you up two strokes per minute. And because you're doing two strokes a minute more, your pace should have increased too without you really thinking properly I need to increase my pace just increasing stroke rate by pushing a little harder as a result puts in more power to the machine and you go faster and so that's the key I really want you to notice that when I'm talking about the stroke and power and things I'm not talking about getting your big Popeye guns out and pulling harder we're not in Spartacus sitting still on a bench and rowing a big Roman ship we're on a rowing machine that lets you use your legs and your legs that push into the machine is responsible depending on who you are between 50 to like 60% of the power that you're putting in to the machine so you push that big because your legs are nice and big and powerful so it stands to reason that they are putting in the majority of the power and then you add in a swing of your back from a forward lean to a backward lean and that adds in 20 30 percent power and then finally at the back of the stroke you pull in your arms which then tops up your available power to that full 100% but you can leak that power so if you were to pull from the front of the machine suddenly you can't get your leg drive or your arm pull right and you're leaking potential power so maybe you're only able to put in 80% of what you can ok I'll shut up because we're about to go up to 24 strokes a minute after this stroke here we go 24 strokes a minute and another 2 to 3 seconds faster this is another good maths stroke where you can just count down in two and a half second chunks so as long as every stroke is two and a half seconds you're fine and even if you just make a point of always driving on a five and a zero they don't really need to worry about the in-betweens the rhythm will soon just bed in 
And hopefully again, just by pushing harder with your legs in order to have a faster drive phase. And then because of your rhythm and ratio, your recovery is a little faster too. That should have resulted in not only an increase in your stroke rate, but also that two to three second increase in your pace too. So again, I'm saying it's all about the leg drive. You push the machine away with your feet to put in that power, but then in order to help it go into the machine, you make sure that your hands connect the handle to the machine as you push. And if you continue to hold a forward body lean and straight arms, then that power from your legs just efficiently floods into the machine, allowing you to then add your back and then your final arm pull. And it can be one of the first big improvements that new rowers recognize is if they think about that rock over the hips from the forward lean to a backward lean back forwards back forwards and holding that forward lean for at least half of the leg drive before swinging it backwards. If you can get that motion in place and continue to think about power pushing from your legs rather than pulling with your arms, you should really see a spike in your pace. Alrighty, six strokes to go. And then we're back down to 20 strokes a minute and 2K plus 18 pace. One more. And there we go. 15 minutes gone. We're halfway there. It's Bon Jovi time. I don't think there are any other songs which talk about being halfway there, are they? Somebody else that I can quote. I mean, if we manage to row a thousand miles, I could start singing the proclaimers at you. I would row 500 miles and I would row 500 more. <laughs> that would take a while. I don't think we'd get a thousand miles squeezed into a half hour session. That much is true. Now, 
regardless, or using the new word irregardless, <laughs> of what your plans are with these 30 minute rows. Remember that you can always come back to these as standalone rows. You don't have to be doing them as part of a 30 days challenge or plan, whatever you want to call it. What I think would be ideal is to stuff some of these sessions in your virtual back pocket for use for like a, a lunchtime workout. You've only got half an hour to spare at the gym. You could just pick a session from this 30 days, 30 minutes playlist and do it over your lunch hour. You could easily drop the warm up as long as you ease yourself into the session. But I don't recommend skipping the cool down. Cool downs are really important both for your muscles, for your brain. And if you're doing this over your lunch hour, hopefully it will stop you going back to your desk and then sitting down at your, I don't know, your meeting or even just looking over paperwork or your computer and rivers of sweat <laughs> running down your face because you're still after glowing from a tough session. So a cool down will help with that. You wouldn't have thought two minutes extra rowing would help cool you down, but it will. So anyway, lunchtime rows. I'll maybe make a new playlist on the YouTube channel with a whole bunch of rows that could go in and you could just call them up when you're looking for a workout to squeeze into your lunch hour. Okay, seven strokes to go. And then we're back up to 22s and two or three seconds faster, which for me is 2K plus 15 I did last time. So I'll do it again this time. Last stroke, here we go. Slightly more powerful push from your legs. You should feel your recovery to the front of the machine is a little bit faster and your pace should go up as a result. Now, I've only really mentioned the big picture stuff about the drive phase. But let's quickly mention the flow that helps for the recovery phase. And it all starts with how you pull the handle into your chest. So if you pull in nice and powerfully at round about sternum height, 
with your elbows through your sides. Maybe a light flare out, but certainly not chicken wings. Then what happens is you create like a springiness from your arms and tendons that wants to rebound the handle away again. And so you use that rebound to start the recovery. It's only a few inches, that rebound, but it's enough to start that handle going forwards. So you go in and out. There's no pause at the back. In and out at the same rhythm. The same speed you pull in at, you push back out at using that rebound. And then as your arms go out and straight, they trigger that recovery forward lean of your back. Whoosh. So that by the time your hands are past your knees, your arms are straight and you're in that forward one o'clock lean. Ta-da. And because your momentum is moving forwards and because your weight has shifted to the front of the seat, all you have to do is bend your knees and you will effortlessly recover to the front of the machine. So there is no pulling, yanking on the foot straps to pull yourself forwards. In fact, it's one foot out, two feet out. Look, I'm still moving. I'm not beached at the back of the machine and I'm not yanking myself forwards with the foot straps. I am using my arms away to start that momentum shift for the recovery. And that, feet back in, that's the advantage of rowing in socks. I can get in and out like that. But this fluid flow is the trick, the key to not only creating the rhythm to row at low rates, but also to get the pace up at high rates. Okay, two more strokes, one more. Now we're back up to 24s and two or three seconds faster. I'm aiming for 157 pace, which is 2K plus 12 for me. And hopefully this will feel natural for you and you'll understand what I meant at the intro about how you have to put in some effort, but it doesn't take you anywhere near maximum. And so this is a mid intensity. I think this is very much the middle of mid. 
but I try not to subdivide. We're not like upper middle class or whatever. But it's definitely, if you're looking for a good sloggy workout, that's not too easy, not too tough, puts the effort up, heart rate is up a bit, I'm up at 80% of max right now, then this is a good session, and actually, it's the perfect session for me today, as being, I've just spent the past two hours almost at the cinema with my youngest Holly watching Ron's Gone Wrong just a sweet little kids film but I bought some cookies white chocolate chip cookies to take in with us and <laughs> I had two during the film and run about 45 minutes in I felt that real dump that energy jump from the sugar spike I was like oh, I really need to have a decent workout when I get home to burn off the sugar try and stabilize my blood glucose because I don't really eat sweets and biscuits and things anymore I'm trying to cut all that out to make sure I stay at 75 kilograms and lightweight status and as being the resistance training I'm also doing is adding some muscle <coughs> I need to make sure that I'm not also adding fat by eating poorly plus it does give me these kind of I mean a little bit of sugar and energy is good for you but my body doesn't really like it I sometimes wonder if I ate too much would I end up type 2 diabetic but I don't really want to find out <laughs> alright then enough about me 8 strokes to go and we're all done <sighs> almost there 5 4 3 2 1 ah right at the end there in the mirror because I wasn't talking and I was actually thinking about how I was rowing I could see in the mirror so I'm still not connecting right at the front especially when I'm talking and I'm not concentrating on what I'm doing so I might take a look at the end a few strokes there when I um, do the next form check Friday which if you don't know about um, every Friday I load up a video look at someone rowing and kind of say what I think is working in that stroke and what could do, need some work and then offer some tips on what they could do it's not all very good saying they're not doing that right but if I don't offer the tips on how to improve then I'm just being childish I'm just saying they don't row very well <laughs> right two minute cool down send workout to PM5 see how easy that was two clicks of my phone and my monitor is now programmed for a two minute cooldown thank you ergzone okay have you had a quick drink 
I'll heave her for a couple of seconds just to give you a chance to have a drink. Make sure that you're just nice and fresh for this cool down. You ready? You're all right? You put the top back on? Good. So let's go for a two minute cool down in three, two, one. Let's go. Now I'm going to do this at 18 strokes a minute again. And around about 2K plus 20 pace for the first, I don't know, 45 seconds or so. Just because we finished up at 24. Intensity was up, so I'll hold 2K plus 20 for a little bit just to help my muscles properly fire to get the blood moving. And then in two strokes time. So after this stroke, I'll just ease off the pressure with my legs which you should feel especially if you're holding the same stroke rate that as you ease off the pressure with your legs the kind of the tension the hang off the handle that you get with your hands will reduce too so although you're putting force into the handle through your hands when you press with your legs. It's important to notice the difference between straight arms and the push of the legs so that you're hanging off the handle. So that force is just kind of, what's the best way? It's just from the pressure of your hands moving backwards because of your legs. That's what's putting the power in. It's not your muscles and your arms pulling against it. You really should only feel that you're pulling here, right at the back of the stroke. So straight, pull. All right. Maybe a bit late to be saying that, but I'm kind of hoping on day 13, you've heard me say that a few times. Carry on cooling down. If you wish, just because I'm stopped, doesn't mean you have to, or do some quick stretching. I recommend uh, quads, hamstrings, shoulders, maybe your biceps and forearms. Um, maybe do some lower back stretches as well, some supine twists or something, if you suffer from lower back pain. And then hopefully you'll be nice and smooth and ready for the next row, which for me, uh, tomorrow it's Sunday morning at nine o'clock UK time, live on Erg Race. Okay, and I'll try and stream that live to YouTube at the same time, if I can get all the tech working this week. I'm just having problems with, oh yeah, anyway, yeah. So I'll try and do that at the same time. Um, Hopefully it'll work this time. Uh, anyway, yeah, so uh, that's what tomorrow's is, and it's a, what I'm calling a freestyle, so you just row 30 minutes as you like. Um, now, what I'm going to do tomorrow, just as a preview in case you watch this, is um, I'm going to do it at 20 strokes a minute, but I'm going to go overload. So whereas I normally say 20 strokes a minute and 2K plus 18, I'm going to go closer to 2K plus 15 or a little bit faster. Um, might not go too fast because I'll, I'll start getting problems talking to you, but I'm going to go for that little bit more power from the legs. So although I do tend to say 20 strokes a minute, I'll row at 2K plus 18 pace from the training, training thing. Sometimes it's still good to add in that power to overdrive that stroke. Um, just not too often, because if you do it too often, you just get fast at low rates, but you can't really translate that into fast at high rates because um, you, yeah, you don't practice it that way. So that's my plan for tomorrow. If you want to follow along with me, um, I'll make sure and talk about that obviously in the row when it happens and all that kind of stuff. But just so you know, in case you're watching this one and you want a preview of what the plan is for tomorrow for me. However, it is a freestyle. So just pick what you want to do. Okay, so uh, you don't have to do the same way as me. You can just you can do it as a time trial, a half hour. Let's see how, f uh, how far you can go. Uh, get into a race with someone or whatever. Totally up to you. Okay. But I'm just throwing something out there in case you want a little bit of guidance. So there we go. So that was day 13 over and done with. I do hope that you enjoyed that one. I think that absolutely flew by once again. I think breaking it into the five minute intervals and doing it that way, you're suddenly like, oh, crikey, we're finished. Um, so uh, yeah, um, to the point that I am colossally running out of uh, time within these things because I keep on flanneling to mention all the things about technique. But again, I'm kind of hoping that because I'm not, I mean, I could easily just start off and say, right then, everybody, let's talk about technique and go through the same script every single time. 
talk about it in exactly the same way and I'd just get dull. You wouldn't come back. So um, hopefully if you watch enough of the videos, you're kind of picking up these little nuggets or nougats <laughs> um, of info as you kind of come through. And you can remember these other things about how I say chin neutral, eyes looking forward, um, up on your posture, and all that kind of stuff. These things will hopefully just kind of, you'll grab them from different rows and put together rather than me just dumper trucking everything at you and you just go, <laughs> I don't know what I'm meant to take in. So um, yeah, and that can be today's hashtag, dumper truck, because then I'm hoping people will go, what? <laughs> so if you leave a comment on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or whatever, then use the hashtag dumper truck. Um, and then that way it lets me know you made it this far through the video. So um, yep, I am going to do, it's probably going to be a bad idea, but I'm going to do a one minute time trial next um, as, after I say goodbye to you. I may tag it on to the end of this uh, just for fun. I may not. So if it's not there, then it didn't go well. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll, I, I'm going to do that just to try and uh, seal off my week of training. And because it's the, the cross-team challenge, this month is a one-minute time trial. So I'm going to do that next. You obviously don't have to do that. Um, I'm just telling you what I'm going to do because, hey, I share everything with you. Um, let's see, dinner tonight is going to be a uh, burger with salad and pasta and a little bit of coleslaw. I have uh, a couple of cans of uh, punk... Um, AF, the alcohol-free beer to have with it. Um, let's see what else. I'm playing the drums with someone tomorrow. There we go. So I'm just sharing everything with you. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, I'll just shut up now. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, I will look forward to, to seeing you or you seeing me or something in a future video. Uh, do let me know if you're enjoying these. We're day 13. It's going well. Hopefully you're keeping up the energy-wise. Your bowl of power is filling up and you're not draining yourself. That said, this one-minute time trial is probably just going to go <laughs> for all my power. So thank you once again. Please look after yourself. Stay safe. Be well. Bye-bye. Ah, off my seat. Many attractive faces through that, and I could tell from the mirror that my technique was terrible. But 340 meters that'll do for the first time trial I have done. In months. Bye bye.